Hey, how's it going? Z-Man the Tech here. Thanks for clicking on the video and tuning into Snowly Games. Today, we're covering my top 10 beat em ups on Nintendo Switch. Without much further ado, let's get into it. Number 10 on my list is a 16 bit beat em up called 99 Vita's Definitive Edition. It features clean 2D pixel art with smooth animations, upgradable skills, combos, and special attacks. Each character has unique attributes and an elemental alignment, whether it be fire, water, wind, lightning, etc. Within each combo and or special move with said characters, you'll notice some really flashy animations and particle effects. There's also a slew of gaming, 80s, and 90s pop culture references sprinkled in as well, which I can always appreciate. The game also features 11 playable characters in total, up to 4 players in co-op, both local and online, story, arcade, remix, versus, and survival modes, as well as engage in some challenging boss battles. I also enjoyed the fact that there are input commands in this game as well. You actually gain experience and level up by fighting enemies, and you can use those points to expand your abilities, combos, and the like. This game retails for $9.99 and does go on sale from time to time. You'll need about 450 megabytes for the install. Number 9 on my list is Streets of Red Devil's Dare Deluxe. This game is a permadeath beat em up that's designed to be played over and over, and each subsequent playthrough offers a fresh and unique experience. The combat system is easy to learn and hard to master, and full of juicy combos with intricate finishers that you can implement within each encounter. You'll have to strategize by managing your cooldown meter when using special attacks and the like. Should you empty that meter, you'll enter an overheating phase where all that you have access to is your standard attack, which can get you by, however you'll have a much more difficult time fighting off enemies. Each kill earns you cash that you can use to upgrade your character, as well as spend to revive yourself. Just keep in mind that once you can't revive anymore, the game is over and the save file is deleted. Yep, it's back to the start. Absolutely brutal. But the combat system is so addictive. You can play solo or with up to 4 players locally. This game retails for $9.99 and goes on sale often. You'll need about 1GB for the install. Number 8 on my list is Phantom Breaker Battlegrounds Overdrive. This beat em up is a spin off of the Phantom Breaker fighting game series with adorable chibi versions of their characters, and it's aggressive. The combo system is vast and plentiful, and you have the ability to gain levels and expand it by gaining experience and leveling up from the enemies you defeat. It also has directional inputs for a larger variety of moves within its combat system as well. And I also appreciate the fact that you can jump between foreground and background seamlessly for multiple areas of combat. That gives me heavy Guardian Heroes vibes, and I'm here for it. This is a very fast paced game that requires some serious mashing at times, so it'd be a great idea to use the controller you're most comfortable with. Thumb fatigue is very much a thing with this one, but oh my god is it ever so fun. So here's the thing. This game was unfortunately delisted on all relative platforms back on March 4th of 2024, however a newer version called Phantom Breaker Battleground Ultimate is slated to release in early 2025, and it's been completely reworked, rebalanced, and enhanced for all modern platforms. There's a playable demo on Steam if you're interested in checking it out early. Either way, be on the lookout and stay tuned. Number 7 on my list is the Capcom Beat'em Up Bundle. The inclusion of this one shouldn't be too much of a surprise, I feel. It's quite the epic compilation of seven absolute classics. These seven titles include Final Fight, Captain Commando, The King of Dragons, Knights of the Round, Warriors of Fate, Armored Warriors, and one of my all-time favorites, Battle Circuit. Each game has flexible difficulty options, various multiplayer options, online capabilities, detailed galleries, and you'll also have the ability to play English and Japanese versions of each title. This compilation retails for $19.99, however, it is on sale for $9.99 at 50% off until November 1st. You'll need about 820 megabytes for the install. Number 6 on my list is TMNT Cowabunga Collection. This collection includes 13 radical TMNT games in one bodacious package. You, uh, you see what I did there? Shut up, Z. Lame. Oh, uh, tone it down a bit? Alright. <laughs> anyway. This compilation is some of Konami's best work, and I really do miss those times. This list spans from arcade, NES, Super NES, Sega Genesis, and Game Boy releases. Some of these titles include online play, as well as local multiplayer, of course. You have the ability to save and rewind anytime, access to button mapping, access to 11 Japanese regional version releases, unique development art and sketches, and historic TMNT media content. 
It's great to have all these classics in one place. Not to mention some of these have really skyrocketed in price in the retro gaming market, so with that being said, the retail price of $39.99 isn't too shabby at all. You'll need about 3.5GB for the install. Number 5 on my list is Raging Justice. This is a classic style beat em up from some of the devs that were part of the legendary team at Rare before the Microsoft acquisition. As many of us know, a good bit of the team split up into their own companies after that change. Free Radical, Crytek, Platonic Games, Chameleon Games, Macon Games, and a few others. Macon Games is the developer of this title, and as per usual, their reputation precedes them when it comes to the level of quality being implemented in their projects. The art style is very nostalgic with its pre-rendered 3D characters and environments. It almost has a stop-motion animation style to it, and it really takes me back to my childhood years. Ah oh man, such simpler times. The combat system is very well structured and feels really good to play. You have your standard combos with punch and kick, along with a button for grabbing and throwing. Like most of the pioneers in the genre, specifically Double Dragon and Streets of Rage, you can punch and kick while grappling and follow up with a throw or slam, and I really like those animations. Just the right amount of screen shake to where you can tell how intense the slam is, but nothing too crazy. You can also stomp out or pound your enemies while they're on the ground as well. There is also a shoulder dash, counter evasive roll, and the like that allows you to rush through multiple enemies. It also seems to have some invincibility frames which could get you out of a jam too, so that's pretty cool. As mentioned earlier, there are weapons and objects that can be picked up and thrown with a specific button as well. For some reason, there is also a riding lawnmower that you can hop onto and run over enemies with. The game isn't gory by any means, but it totally could have been with some of the methods that you can dispatch your enemies in. Of course that would have changed the ESRB rating, so I get why they didn't take that route. You can play solo or up to 3 players locally. This game retails for $14.99 and does go on sale ever so often. You'll need about 1.1GB for the install. Number 4 on my list is Scott Pilgrim vs The World, The Game, Complete Edition. Oof, that's a mouthful. Some of you might remember back in the PS3 360 era when Scott Pilgrim vs The World was delisted from those platforms. It was a rough time. Of course, if you're one of the lucky folks that purchased it beforehand, you always had access to it should you need to re-download it. But anywho, this remastered Complete Edition released back in January 2021, and I was very happy to finally have the chance to play this game since I missed out during its original release on the 7th generation consoles. This version includes the remastered version of the game along with its original DLCs, Knives Chow, and Wallace Wells add-on packs. And this is a 2D arcade style beat-em-up inspired by the iconic comic book series and movie Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, where you portray a boy named Scott who is in love with a girl named Ramona Flowers, however in order to be with her, he has to deal with the league of her evil exes. That's just the main story though, and you're actually free to choose from several characters on your playthrough. Each one has multiple color palettes as well. This one is hella challenging and is by no means a pushover. Now that's not to say it's not fun. It has an intricate and expansive combat system with new input command based moves that you can learn by leveling up while fighting enemies, like many other modern games in this genre. There are some pretty neat button mashing sequences that you can engage in when you stagger enemies as well. You can also unlock secret items and modes, summon powerful allies, compete in some mini games, and much more. This game could be played solo or with up to 4 players locally. There is also an online mode that supports 2 through 4 players. This game retails for $14.99 and you'll need about 1.1GB for the install. Number 3 on my list is The Takeover. This side-scrolling beat-em-up takes heavy inspiration from the pioneers of the genre in the 90s, most notably Streets of Rage. So much in fact that I considered it to be SOR 4 before it actually became a thing. Of course, it actually is a thing now and it's more amazing than I thought it would be, more on that one later. But as for the takeover, this is a high quality beat em up with detailed 3D art design when it comes to the characters and environments, the animations are solid and snappy, and the combos are flexible and intuitive. You have punch and kick attacks with their own set of combos that you can mix and match to create magnificent strings of attacks that you can unleash. There are special attacks that deal some serious damage as well. You can sprint into a ramming attack and take out multiple enemies, and you also have the ability to pick up and throw enemies and objects. The moveset very much reminds me of Streets of Rage. I hate to keep referencing it, however, it really does feel like a love letter to the franchise. And considering that the legendary Streets of Rage composer Yuzo Koshiro contributed some tracks into this project alongside Little V Mills, Richie Branson, and James Rowland, it just makes sense. The combat is fluid and fun, art design is highly detailed and clean, and the music is top notch. This is one of the most solid efforts to the genre that I've seen in a long time. This game retails for $19.99 and you'll need about 2GB for the install. 
Number 2 on my list is Streets of Rage 4. I mean, come on, how could I not include this game on my list? Our favorite original cast comes back along with some newcomers in this long-awaited follow-up to the legendary beat-em-up trilogy that helped define the genre and set the standard for beat-em-ups in the 90s and beyond. It stays true to the high-octane beat-em-up action and electronic dance-influenced music that we've come to know and love over the years. However, it builds upon the solid gameplay that we remember and introduces some new mechanics within its combat system. It is so much more open now and it even has a juggling mechanic that makes combos in this game an absolute thrill to pull off. The beautiful hand-drawn art and animations are breathtaking and legitimate eye candy. And of course it wouldn't be a Streets of Rage soundtrack without Yuzo Koshiro and Motohiro Kawashima on the project. Plus, one of my all-time favorite composers contributed to this project as well, and she is none other than the amazing Yoko Shimamura. They're working alongside Harumi Fujita, Kaiji Yamagishi, Skaddle, Das Mortal, X Middleton, and Grandislava. This team of composers went all out and really put together something magnificent. This title can be played solo or with up to four players locally. You can also take advantage of online mode to play with your friends or fellow gamers from afar. You've got over a dozen former Streets of Rage characters that are unlockable and playable in their original pixel forms, and you can play the game with the music from the previous games of the series too if you wish to do so. There are 12 unique stages to fight through, and I highly recommend this one. This game retails for $24.99, and there is a DLC called Mr. X Nightmare that adds three new characters, survival mode, and the ability to customize your fighting style and much more. It retails for $7.99. You'll need about 3.9 gigabytes for the install. And now for the number one game on my list, the TMNT Shredder's Revenge Bundle. This bundle includes TMNT Shredder's Revenge and its Dimension Shellshock DLC. Two words, Miyamoto Yusagi. That's it, that's the whole review. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. But seriously, I was so stoked that they added my dude. Absolutely one of my favorite crossovers in the TMNT universe of all time. Don't get me wrong, I was excited to see the addition of Karai as well, but the Yusagi Yojimbo crossover is legendary and we love to see it. The other new feature in the DLC is survival mode where you can collect crystals and travel across dimensions that pay tribute to multiple TMNT eras. As for the base game and the overall game experience in general, it's nothing short of phenomenal. The detailed pixel art calls back to the classic TMNT games like Turtles in Time and the like. The soundtrack from T. Lopez is fantastic, and gameplay is fluid and engaging. Like the previous entry on my list, this game has an interesting juggle mechanic that allows you to make some insane combo strings, and mixing in the super attacks can make for some hilarious times. Poor Foot Clan couldn't even hit the ground from being juggled so hard. <laughs> you can even do air combos too. There's a lot of cameos from the characters and enemies throughout the TMNT universe, and each level has specific missions and collectibles for you to tackle should you feel so inclined. As mentioned prior, T. Lopez composed for the game, with contributions from guitarist Johnny Atma, rappers Mega Ran, Ghostface Killa, and Raekwon, and singer Mike Patton. It's truly outstanding and really does capture the setting and aesthetics of the subject matter. As far as the playable characters, you can choose from the four main turtles, Master Splinter, Casey Jones who is unlockable, and even April O'Neil. And of course Yusagi and Karai, which come with the Dimension Shell Shock DLC. Oof, now that was a tongue twister. The gameplay in this one is fantastic and I highly recommend it. This bundle retails for $29.68, but if you only want the base game, it's $24.99. You'll need about 1.6 gigabytes for the install. Alright, that's gonna do it for this video everyone. I really appreciate you rocking with me on this journey to check out my top 10 beat'em ups on Nintendo Switch. This is another genre that I feel is pretty saturated on the storefront, and there are definitely others I would like to mention that I haven't had the pleasure of playing yet like Double Dragon Gaiden, or River City Girls, and of course, you know, I can't forget the good old Eight Dragons, you know, as uh, I'm actually part of the team that actually put that together. I'm one of the composers with the team Extend Mode, based in the UK, uh, so I have to give a shout out to uh, Eight Dragons, you know, so shameless plug, but here we are. Now, of course, this isn't the end-all be-all. It's just a personal list of what I've actually played and can give my honest impressions on, so take it as it is. Did any of your games make my list? Are there any beat-em-ups that should have made it on? Drop it down below in the comments and let me know. And if you like what you've seen, be sure to hit that like button. It helps out a ton with the algorithm to help push my content to others like yourself. And if you're new here, consider subscribing for more content like this. Have a good one, take care, and I'll see you on the next one.
future is the classic. The future is the classic. Time is of the essence. I feel like I am master. Future is the classic. The future is the classic. It's always moving forward, so I'm never moving backwards.